Hello and welcome back. My name is Keith Simpson and this morning I'm going to introduce you to the Merlin. I just want to run through basically the quick things you need to do every day before you use your Merlin. So we're going to look at um, uh, initial checks, uh, initial uh, plumbing requirements and initial settings for first use. So the first thing I want to show you is <coughs> when we turn the machine on, uh, first of all uh, the screen will light up and show you the version of the software and then it'll go to a screen which we're going to uh, come back to on in, in a following slide, you'll see it in a second, um, which gives you the runtime hours for the machine. <laughs> now it's quite a good idea to just keep an eye on those runtime hours because if you go between 500 and 1000 hours uh, a year, then you really should be looking at uh, getting the machine service. So the machine will come on, a bit of a splash screen on the front, check the runtime hours, and that's your first check for the day. The second check for the day for Merlin really should be to do a leak test, which is a very, very simple thing to do. Um, we're going to do a leak test and we're going to do a very quick dynamic test. And they take really a couple of minutes, um, if that. And you don't even have to be present. So I'll show you the leak test. We're going to very simply take a short piece of tube. It can be any length of tube. It could be one as long as this. It, it doesn't have any effect on the uh, results of the, of the test. It just takes longer to get to the result if you use a longer piece of tube. So we're going to put that tube on the to patient. We're going to put the other end on the from patient. So what we're doing is we're just creating a loop a closed loop on the patient circuit. We're going to put the machine into cycle, uh, pressure cycling mode by turning the inspiratory knob right round to say PL, and we're going to turn the flow rate right down to 0.1. So 0.1, that's 100 mils per minute. That's just over a mil per second. And we're going to set our maximum pressure now to 57 centimeters of water. So we're going to put in um, one mil, just over one mil per second into a blind tube and see if we can get up to 57 centimeters of pressure. If we can, then we've got an absolutely no leak whatsoever. And it's very simple, set it up, 0.1 PL, doesn't matter about the expiratory time, uh, 57 on the maximum pressure, and hit go. And what you'll see is these bar graphs start to rise, and the numbers on the screen start to, to climb as well. Now, because this is um, audible, you can actually set this going, go off, do what you need to do, set up other things, and then you'll hear it beep at the end of the uh, test, and then come back to it. If you don't come straight back to it, let's just go on and do another test and keep doing the test until you come back. Uh, but one of the results that we're going to look for will be on the screen, and you can see that at any time. So we're now up to an airway pressure of 43, 44. It's still climbing nicely. Once we get to that magic 57, it's going to uh, beep and go back and start again. Okay, so there's the 57. We got to uh, pressure, it's gone back, and it's now started to do it again. If I look on the screen, it says 61 mils, which for a little tube like this is, is almost perfect. We're looking for something around 60, 70 mils. If you'd used a larger tube like that, you might have got something like 100 mils. It doesn't matter. The point is, can it get to that pressure? If it can't get to that pressure on that tiny flow, you've got a leak somewhere in the system. And what are we testing? Well, because we put it from the to patient to the from patient, we're testing the upper inspiratory valve and we're testing the lower inspiratory valve and we're testing all of the inside of the machine. If there's any leak within the chamber, the internal filter, the internal plumbing, it'll show up as a fail on this test. So we're testing everything that's really important to the machine. So you can be fairly confident if you've got this level of um, uh, leak um, performance, then you've got a great machine. Right, so we'll stop that. The other one thing I like to do is first thing is to put this Leave it in pressure cycling mode. Now put it at full rate, 25 litres a minute. Or on some of the modified machines, that'll be 40 litres a minute. Put the expiratory time, just turn it right down. It'll go to something like a half or whatever. Uh, because we're pressure cycling, it'll adjust as soon as it gets going. We're just going to run it. It's going to run at full speed. And at the end of the stroke, it's going to beep. So I'm going to put my finger on the reset uh, button. Okay, so I'm going to just cancel that beep. Now it's running. Now it's running at full speed in and out, and it's nice and smooth and there's no problem. And I'm halfway through the inspiratory inspiration, I'm going to put my thumb over the two patient and block it off. What it should do is because it pressure something, it should just stop and start again. If it stalls there, then it tells me that the machine is having trouble running at that speed up to that high pressure and it's getting sticky and needs a service. So wait for the inspiration, wait for that motor to go in. Perfect immediate stop, release of pressure, goes back and does it again. So there we are. <clears throat> this machine is 
uh, performing perfectly. So I now know that I'm ready to use the machine. It's got no leaks and it's got performance um, at a level where I'm happy with it. The second part of your Merlin setup is now going to be the plumbing, uh, for want of a better term. So what we're going to do now, we're going to set it up for non-rebreathing and a rebreathing system. So we'll start with the rebreathing system. It's a very simple uh, system to set up. All we're really going to do is take the uh, inspiratory limb from a, um, a suitable uh, circle system and we're going to put that into our gas in. And then we're going to take the expiratory limb that would take the gas away from the patient normally. We're going to take that out from the, the gas out. And as you probably remember from other videos, internally that is connected to that and that is connected to that. So that if we put a circle, a patient, sorry, put a patient um, system on here, then we put that to that and then this is running down to the patient. What we've really done is just made this a long tube. That's connected to that, and that's connected to that. And in this condition, as I mentioned before, I can breathe, and I just breathe through those long tubes. Now, uh, if you've seen my videos on dead space, you'll understand that that constitutes no dead space. This is the dead space. This is acting as circuit volume, which has very little implication because we're ventilating. Okay, so that's our setup. That's very simple. We've got our fresh gas coming into the uh, back of our circle system going to set the fresh gas flow up now and that of course would be uh, off to, to waste as normal and then uh, we have this set up the patient set up as normal this doesn't change even though we change from normal breathing to rebreathing um, and this is our, our straightforward setup so we've set this up like this and then obviously the flow into the circle system is as per a circle system so it's no different because it's on Merlin it's just the same so it's going to be your metabolic requirement plus some, depending on how closely you're gonna control this circuit. So if you're running semi-closed or semi-open, however you want to, to term it, we're gonna set this at at least 10 mils per kilo and then some. So if this is a 30 kilo dog, we're gonna be setting our flow rate at at least 300 mils, but probably near a 500, 600, or possibly even a litre to start with the, for that denitrogenation phase. So it's exactly the same setup as per a circle. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is very quickly swap this and put this onto a non-rebreathing circuit so you can see the setup for that. So now we're just gonna very quickly look at the non-rebreathing setup. Um, and it's a very simple setup as well. Basically what we're gonna do is take fresh gas from the fresh gas outlet and feed it into the gas in. <clears throat> but one thing we have to do with all, uh, all circuits, irrespective of what we're feeding in here, if it's pressurized is, uh, as explained extensively in other videos, so I'm not gonna go into it here, we have to make sure that there's something to cope with this valve being cut off. So this is the arrangement here. This acts like a reservoir bag for the system, not the animal. So this is a reservoir bag for the system. Fresh gas is coming in to here. That acts as a reservoir. If it should fill up and spill, it goes into here, meets the uh, waste gas from the, from the um, uh, ventilator anyway, and then that will go off to scavenge. This bit, as I said previously, doesn't change, so that's still connected to the patient. And then that's our setup for non-rebreathing. And what we're going to do very quickly, um, we're going to set this up for non-rebreathing. So let's say this is our 30 kilogram dog. Um, that's a bit heavy, uh, really, for a non-rebreathing system. But as an example, say it's a 10 kilogram dog. So we want uh, one, uh, 100 mils in a second, which is six liters a minute. So our fresh gas flow has got to be six liters a minute or more. So we set this to six liters a minute. We set our um, settings. So we could set one second of inspiration, 100 mils of tidal volume. One second of inspiration, say uh, three seconds of expiration. That gives us a a respiratory rate of 15 and our maximum airway pressure. We're going to expect to get to a tidal uh, peak inspiratory pressure of maybe 10, 11. So we'll set this to five or six above that. So we're going to set that to maybe uh, 17, 18 as our, our peak pressure. I'll put it on 17. We're not going to worry about the assist now. And then we would just um, put that to ventilate. Whoops, wrong button. We'll put that to ventilate. And that's it, I've got an airway pressure of 10. I'm happy with that. I've got a tidal volume of 100 mils. Uh, I'm um, very pleased with the way that's performing. So this is volume cycling. Just to very quickly run through what we would do if we were pressure cycling. So I've got a pressure of 10 and, a, and 100 mils. So what I would do, I'd go to the pressure cycling mode. I'd set my target pressure to 10. 
put my flow to six as we just discussed and I'm going to put that to run. Okay, now it's delivering to a pressure of 10 and the delivered volume is uh, 19 mils or so. So we're basically doing exactly the same thing, that's pressure cycling. There's a lot more information on long videos about how to set the machine up. Today's video is really about your checking, your setting up for your uh, plumbing, checking it's done correctly, and then initial setup and off we go. So that's the non-rebreathing. I'm just gonna swap to rebreathing, show you what to do there, and then that will conclude the video. Okay, so just to conclude with the um, rebreathing circuit, this is our setup. We've gone through basically the plumbing there. Uh, same thing as before. Here's our animal. We're gonna volume cycle. We set this to one second. We're gonna set off volume to 100 mils or so. 110 there. Set our expiratory time to three, that's fine. And our maximum airway pressure to 16, 17 as before. Put that running. There we are, our airway pressure's now, now 10, 11 or 12. I've got it on 110, so it's slightly different from before. Well, that's it, um, you know, we've gone through our checks, we've gone through our plumbing, we've set the machine up and gone uh, through the volume cycling. Just for completeness, I'll change this. Uh, so 110 mils, pressure of 12. Let's go to pressure cycling, set that to 12, set that to six liters per minute. Off we run, pressure cycling. Now get into a pressure of 12 and deliver 116 mils. So we've done exactly the same thing as described the same in previous videos. So there you are, come in in the morning, do your leak test, do your performance test, check the setup of your rebreathing or non-rebreathing system, set the dials appropriately, connect your patient and go. Thanks for listening.